What is going on with YouTube, man? I don't know if you lot know this right, but recently a bunch of huge YouTubers have been getting strikes they don't deserve, losing monetization on all of their videos, and even getting their channel temporarily deleted. Which makes no sense because they did absolutely nothing wrong. But it makes even less sense to punish them when they're doing absolutely nothing wrong because there are plenty of channels that are doing something wrong all the time. And they get no punishment at all. Like, why are you doing this, YouTube? Like, why would you punish these guys who are following your rules and not the channels who are breaking them? But here's the thing, right? This affects literally everyone who makes any type of video on YouTube. All round classy guys, the Farm Brothers, got a video with 8 views blocked worldwide from a YouTuber who had 10 subscribers. Well, don't worry, cuz I got your back, guys. It's a shame that people are only making videos about this issue after they're the ones affected by it, right? But I'm gonna make one before that happens to me. So what I'm gonna do over this video and the next one is go over YouTube's rules. Rules. YouTube has rules. Believe it or not, it does. YouTube has its seven community guidelines. Think of them as the seven commandments of YouTube, right? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna remind YouTube what these community guidelines are because they've clearly forgotten. And for each one, I'm gonna point out a bunch of channels that are violating them regularly in an attempt to get YouTube to start punishing these channels who deserve it rather than the completely innocent ones who don't. But listen, in this video, I'm just going to be focusing on what I consider to be the most important community guideline for a community of video makers. Namely, copyright law and fair use. Now listen, I've been f***ed over quite a bit already in my short online career, right? I've had other YouTubers flat out steal my jokes word for word, which is not considered appropriate shopping attire according to my local Tesco. Which is not really considered appropriate shopping attire according to my local Tesco. Now there's a reason why I don't go to the showers after the gym. Because I don't go to the gym. Now there's a reason why I don't go to the showers at the gym. Because I don't go to the gym. Just give her some beats or something. Just buy her some beats or something. I've also had some guy use my copyrighted material to put together a fake advert for himself which deceived and fooled a bunch of people into subscribing to him. And I've even had my videos stolen and uploaded to Facebook and Dumper which have at least 12 million views total on those. 12 million views! That's a quarter of my combined YouTube total to date. And it was stolen from me. So if all of these forms of theft of my material is seen as shitty, why is it not seen as shitty when reaction channels steal people's entire videos on YouTube? Um, time for me to make money off your hard work. Alright, <laughs> let's react! As I hope we've all seen thanks to the Farm Brothers, reaction channels are the scum of YouTube. And the reason for this is that pretty much every single video that reactors make completely violates copyright laws and YouTube's own community guidelines about copyright. Now listen, let me just explain this, okay? I do not have a problem with all reactions. That is not the case, right? Here's Mr. Repsion doing a reaction video and there's nothing wrong with it at all. Here's a video from the Completely Unnecessary Podcast guys, who I love by the way, who are giving their thoughts on the recent Suicide Squad trailer and again, there's nothing wrong with it at all. But, here's a similar video reacting to that very same Suicide Squad trailer, which does have something wrong in it. Can you see what it is? Aside from the fact that this guy hasn't even moved during the entire time I've been talking, the main problem is how some reaction videos revolve around showing the video they're reacting to in the bottom corner of theirs. And they don't just show a clip of it, they go one step further and show the entire uninterrupted video from start to finish. I thought it was like free promotion. I thought it was a good thing. Despite what reaction channels will tell you, the reactions they make do not help YouTubers, alright? It hurts them. Reaction channels would go and say that they do it purely to promote other channels. They're pretty much like a charity then, aren't they? So given that, YouTubers should appreciate the extra promotion, shouldn't they? The worst things about YouTube. Reaction video. React videos. Ah. I really like the part where you played my video in its entirety. Dude straight up just took my video and put it in the bottom corner of his. Why bother going to my channel to watch that video when you can just watch that and your reaction. But the guys that I just showed you a second ago are all huge YouTubers, right? And they're all expressing that they don't agree with reaction videos at all. Three of those four YouTubers had their videos reacted to and they didn't appreciate it one bit. 
And they're not saying that they don't appreciate it from a creative level, meaning that they just don't like those type of videos. He's literally just watching videos on YouTube and reacting to it. And they just f***ing sit there and watch it. Doing those sort of videos requires no kind of skill. They don't agree with what they're doing from a moral, community guideline, and a legal perspective. The biggest problem with these new reaction channels is that they're not going out of their way to ask permission from the uploader of the original video if they have permission to react to it. But I'm sure all the reaction channel fans are going to mention how the reaction channels always say that they make no money, right? I don't get that much money from reactions. What do people not understand? I'm not half as rich as you idiots think I am. The biggest issue you guys have is how successful we are and how little effort we are to get to, to that success. You should actually applaud us for that. You should be like, congratulations, man. <laughs> All you do is just react to videos and you make this much money? Like... So if reaction videos make no money, then why is this guy boasting about how much money he makes reacting? Well, it's because they lied. They do make money off reacting. And they make plenty of it. This guy is Rashad the Reactor. He's one of the most well-known reactors on YouTube. In the month that he made this video, Rashad got 3 million views in that month. So while this guy's boasting about his 3 million views a month, Tyrone Magnus gets about 14 million views a month. That's almost 5 times as much. So while this guy's boasting about how much money he makes, Tyrone made almost five times as much as him, yet he still says that he makes nothing. So do you still think that he makes nothing? Or do you think that maybe he's lying and trying to get some sympathy? After deleting 28 million views worth of videos this month, Jinx still gained 2 million views, meaning that he got 30 million views last month. That's 10 times as much as Rashad. So do you still think that reactors make no money? Really? You got it. You got it. But Groot, reactors put a lot of effort into their videos. Yep. No, you're right. This soul has a reaction channel with almost 350,000 subscribers. And look at him. I see plenty of effort in this reaction. It's not like just sitting there motionless like this idiot's doing. It's something that everyone can do, is it? Jesus Christ, look at this one. That's one talented baby. What effort are you talking about? What effort goes into making reaction videos? Seriously. Tyrone even told me himself via DM that it's his charisma, voice, intellect and comedy that make his reaction videos special. And all of those qualities combined enhance the viewing experience. Because I'll admit, like, sometimes the reactions on this channel, they, they can be f***ing boring. And it's true, most reaction channels are like dudes who just sit in front of their computer and they just, like, hit record. And then they don't even have much of a personality. Tyrone, to me, he is one of the people that makes reactions good. Alright, so let's test out this claim. Let's look at a reaction that Tyrone Magnus made to my video, alright? And let's have a look at how he enhanced the viewing experience of my video. My video was 16 minutes long. In those 16 minutes, with all his charisma, intellect and comedy, guess how many words he said throughout? Go on then, guess man! That's a serious question. How many words do you think that Tyrone Magnus said in my entire 16 minute video? Let me tell you, alright? Seven. Seven words. I am not exaggerating this by the way. He literally said seven words in 16 minutes. And after the video, where you would at least imagine that he would talk about the video he just watched, he didn't even do that. All he did was defend himself and talk about how he does so much more than reacting. Which is not addressing any of the points I brought up in my video at all. I do not understand, right? Do other reaction channels consider that acceptable? To say a total of seven unrelated words during a video that is a quarter hour long. He was pretty much silent. I was yeah. listening to the He was a silent review. And he thinks there's nothing wrong with that. A silent review. He defends himself while essentially admitting that yes, he does indeed add nothing to the video at all. When you're watching someone watch a video, um, even if someone's facial expression is blank for a moment or two, or, or longer, um, that shows you that at that moment they're not amused. Are you joking? Now listen, I'm sure a good chunk of the viewers are wanting to know this, right? Why have I been so nasty against Tyro Magnus on Twitter and once on my Twitch channel? Okay, let me tell the story, alright? I myself had Tyro Magnus react to a video of mine a few months ago. One problem is that he never asked for permission. And if he did, I wouldn't have given it to him because I do not agree with reaction channels. I've made my feelings about reaction channels very clear. 
But whatever, he went and stole my video anyways. It's not like YouTube cares, right? Alright, so anyways. Last time I saw, he had over 300,000 views on that video. Which equates to hundreds of dollars, alright? Hundreds. Do you know how much I made off that video? Oh, you probably pocketed it all great. Not one dollar. I didn't make one dollar off that video. The video that Tyrone made using my stolen video absolutely, undeniably made hundreds of dollars, alright? And I made none of it. So if I didn't get any of that money it generated, where do you think it went? We're not taking money from anyone. Despite what he'll tell you, Tyrone was absolutely making money off the video that I made. My manager at my network, The Collective, which deals with some of the biggest names in YouTube, told me all about it. You would think that once I put in a third party claim on YouTube, I'll get paid all the money it generated, right? Wrong! I only start getting paid for all the views the video gets after I put a claim in and after it gets approved. So all the views that Tyrone got off my video before I realised he had stolen my video, even though his use of my entire unedited video goes against copyright laws and fair use, and even though I would have never given him permission to do so, according to YouTube, he gets to keep! He gets to reap the benefits of my hard work. He steals my videos, which I would have never approved, and then he gets to keep the money he made from stealing. Wow, YouTube, what kind of retarded system is that? Is there anything about this website that isn't retarded anymore? So someone putting in a third party claim essentially means that a reactor stops making money from a video. This is why they don't ask for permission. As a reactor, asking someone for permission is a stupid thing to do, right? Because all it does is lets that person know that they reacted to their video. Which means that they can put in a third party claim sooner, which means that they'd get less views and hence less money. It's an illegal, get rich quick style of video. So because of YouTube's stupid system, I am burdened with having to always stay on the lookout for people stealing my videos. I, as a video maker, have to shift some of my attention and my focus away from video making so I can be on the lookout for video thieves. People stealing my videos becomes my responsibility. YouTube does nothing about channels that routinely steal videos like this. But this isn't even the worst part. In YouTube's eyes, I don't deserve any of the money generated by my video unless I find out it's been stolen. It's stupid, right? But whatever. So I go and put my third party claim in, right? So now I'm the one earning money from it. So after my third party claim is in and Tyrone is no longer the one earning money from my video, guess what he does? The video that I made that is now earning me money, he deletes it. I still knew it and I still deleted it. As far as Tyrone Magnus is concerned, if he can't benefit from my hard work, then nor will I. What a class act Tyrone is, right? That's how Tyrone played me. He got rid of that video, which was my revenue stream. I deleted it, like I said, because Akasan told me he didn't like the fact that I did it. Tyrone says that another reactor called Akasan told him that I wasn't happy about the video, which is what made him delete it. But let's analyze that, right? Tyrone deleted my video about a week ago. Apparently, because of what Akasan said. Now listen, it is true that I made it clear to Akasan that I didn't like Tyrone's video. But, it's been at least a month and a half since I last spoke to Akasan, right? And Akasan himself emailed me saying that the last time he spoke to Tyrone about anything concerning me was, and I'll quote, months ago. So given that they spoke about it months ago, why would Tyrone delete the video now? Hmm. However, I put my third party claim in days before he deleted the video. So you tell me why you think Tyrone really deleted that video. Because he has my best interests at heart? Or was it because he wasn't profiting from his this video anymore and because he couldn't give two shits about me getting paid from the video that I made? By the way, just to point this out, right? Tyrone already makes a thing of it to delete any and all hate comments that he gets. Post all your comments down below, let me know what you all think. Anyone that um, attacks me will be banned as usual. Because nasty comments hurt Tyrone's feelings. He doesn't keep hate comments, so why would he keep my hate video? Because he's getting paid from it, obviously, but as soon as he's not getting paid from it anymore, it's just hurting his feelings. So f it, at that point, let's delete that. Now listen, over the past few days, right, Tyrone has made three speculative videos that totaled over an hour, even though he says he has no information whatsoever. In these three videos, this guy has told a load of lies, right? I'm not going to get into it with Grady Underay. Don't expect a video from me 
It'll just be silence for me. Iron said he would not make another video addressing this, but he then went on to make two more, including another one within literally three hours of saying that he wouldn't. These 12 year olds, I know from, not even 12, these 8 year olds are gonna come in like they did with the Jinx video. Has anyone seen a comment in my Jinx video? Yeah, you've got the same followers. You got the same age range that follow you. What are you talking about? This is another lie, right? My viewership is mainly 18 to 35. I found out um, through the grapevine that he doesn't do all of his own um, research either. He has someone else that does it for him. Like I said, he doesn't do all his research by himself. First of all, that's irrelevant anyways. And secondly, yes, I do do all of my own research. If I don't, I give credit, like how I did to the prank reviewer and Danny Duncan in one of my prank videos. But this is not the worst lie that he's told, alright? Okay, first of all, Tyrone has some pretty nice things to say about me. Which is everything that he's doing. I'm not slinging no mud at him at all. Oh my god, he's such a low-level intelligence person. He's a faceless coward. You're a horrible person. I mean, truly, you know, you are the scum of the earth. But let me show you Tyrone's worst lie. Over the three videos, one of Tyrone's biggest complaints is that I never let him know that my problem was how he earned money off my video. I, I, I don't know what it is that I did, and I know nothing about what he's talking about. I somehow did something that affected him, and I have no idea what it was. Tyrone even swears on his mother's grave that I did not tell him. I have no idea what the f he's talking about, like I said. I on my video. mother's grave. And that's why I'll tell y'all, like on my mother's grave, I'm telling you the truth. But if you look at these screenshots from our DM conversation, you will see that I told him exactly why I was pissed off. Yet he still plays the victim and makes out like I'm trying to keep him in the dark. How can you still go and act like you weren't told, Tyrone? I told you very clearly in the end why I was pissed off. I told him all of this, and then he still goes and makes a video swearing on his mother's grave that I wasn't telling him. Tyrone Magnus lied on his mother's grave in a desperate attempt to keep everyone on his side. Have I told lies in the past? Yes. As if him deleting the video that's earning me money wasn't low enough, that's low. Again, look at these pictures of our DM conversation. I have absolutely nothing to hide. And to an extent, right, that's one of the problems of YouTube fandom in a sense, right? Once someone has a big following, for some reason, it's so hard for people to start seeing them in a bad light. Not everyone who has a big following on YouTube is innocent and amazing and an angel. But here's the thing, right? I don't lie about Jack. One complaint I get all the time is that, Oh, great, you're not professional. I'm like, yo, alright, come on, man. I mean, the level of unprofessionalism. Listen, I am not a PR expert and I have no interest in coming off as professional, right? So with all due respect, stop looking at me like I'm the bad guy for not being professional because I'm being real. Tyrone Magnus is absolutely a liar and he's been lying to everyone. But that's aside, that's my personal beef with Tyrone and I think he's a scumbag, right? But listen, it's not just Tyrone. The biggest problem with these new reaction channels is that they're not going out of their way to ask permission from the uploader of the original video if they have permission to react to it. Let me just stress this point though, okay? Me thinking reaction videos are crap is not my issue with reaction channels, okay? One of my issues is that reaction channels don't ask for permission. And when you're a reaction channel and you don't ask for permission, it is certain that reaction channels will be breaking copyright law as showing the entire video, as opposed to little snippets here and there, completely goes against the fair use policy, which is not respecting copyright. And not respecting copyright is breaking a YouTube community guideline, which is something you would imagine YouTube would take seriously. But it doesn't! Tyrone Magnus has not got a clue about copyright laws. If you look at this screenshot from our DM conversation, you will see Tyrone very confidently and proudly comparing his use of entire uninterrupted videos of other people to my use of pictures of people's faces. Is he retarded? How can anyone think that these two are in any way comparable? Okay, here's where the problem lies, right? YouTube is a platform where any old b off the street, no matter how low his intelligence is, can become a professional video maker. And for some reason, YouTube does not require anyone to go through a copyright workshop or anything like that. So YouTube becomes a place where morons go around making videos completely oblivious to the insane amounts of copyright infringement that they are doing. So I have to cover this instead. For those of you who don't know, these are the four criteria that govern fair use. 
the reaction channel's showings of entire copyrighted videos in their own videos adds absolutely nothing to the original video that they're reacting to. Especially when they're admitting to doing silent reactions. So their videos are absolutely not transformative at all. A silent reaction adds absolutely nothing. So their use of copyrighted videos in the way that they do them completely violates condition one. The third condition, they show the entire copyrighted video. You can't get more substantial than that. So the third condition is completely violated as well. Yes, even if the guy pauses in the middle to make his stupid and funny comments, because he's still showing the entire video. And using the entire video means that people have no reason whatsoever to then go and watch the original. Because they've already seen every single second of the original video in the reaction video. And this impacts the original video maker via lost views. So their use of the videos in the way that they use them does not in any way fall under fair use. Not asking for permission before reacting to the video makes all the difference. So all reaction channels, except the Fine Brothers, were guilty of this. I hate when they bring up the Fine Bros, y'all. Like they're exempt from it. Now listen, let me just say this, right? I do not like the Fine Brothers at all. That they tried to trademark a word, but the type of reaction videos that the Fine Brothers would make were, in all honesty, completely fine under copyright law. Because, for one, they would not show the entire unedited video, and secondly, they would ask for permission. The Fine Brothers are a huge YouTube channel, and as a result, they run a very large company. They do these things like ask for permission and not show the entire video, not because they want to, but because they have to, in order to follow fair use policy and to respect copyright laws. Because if they didn't, they would be in big trouble. So if the Fine Brothers have to do these things, why don't smaller, yet still huge YouTube channels like these have to do that stuff? YouTube, they're committing crimes on your platform and you're letting them do it. Why are they not being held accountable for their continued breaches of copyright laws? You can't plead ignorance here, mate. You can't just go to a judge and say, whoops, mate, I didn't know any of that copyright. I didn't. My bad. Now that's ridiculous. In the YouTube terms and services, which every YouTube user is required to agree to, you are almost immediately told about the community guidelines. You are required to read them and required to follow them, okay? Reaction channels have shown themselves to repeatedly and habitually break these copyright laws over and over again. Wake up, YouTube! Now listen, in short, right, I think it's ridiculous how YouTube is punishing people that don't break any laws, especially when there are channels that over and over again, without fail, continue to break these laws and they don't get punished at all. I haven't got a monkeys what YouTube's doing, but with all due respect, YouTube needs a reboot and needs to start again. Now listen, this was a bit of a serious video, right? Next one's not going to be nearly as serious, right? Because it's not personal to me. But, again, YouTube, open your eyes and listen to this video and the next video because you need to remember what your own community guidelines are. I should not be having to tell you this, but how sad a situation is it that I am having to? Jesus Christ. Ugh.